Hello and welcome to Caster Reviews. I'm Adam Caster and we're continuing our look today at the Halo series with Halo 2. The funny thing is, Bungie never meant for Halo to be the franchise that it is today, or even the original trilogy going up to Halo 3, although I think the ending of Combat Evolved was a bit of sequel bait. But since Halo Combat Evolved was so successful, a sequel was already a foregone conclusion. As we'll see later in the review, Halo 2 fulfills the vision of the original team to expand on scrapped ideas for Halo Combat Evolved, but it still did have some issues in development. The game was heavily rushed because of Bungie's focus on online multiplayer with the fledgling Xbox Live, something Halo Combat Evolved never had to deal with. Like Halo Combat Evolved, I want to see if this game holds up to the age test, and is worth playing for more than just the lore. Once again, I'll be playing this off the Master Chief Collection, but with a twist. Once I saw the remastered CG cutscenes, I knew for a fact that I wasn't even going to touch the original graphics. Since I was going to recommend that you play with the remastered visuals anyway, I'm going to do this review with them as well, because they're just that good. As we head into the plot, spoilers are abound, so don't tell me I didn't warn you. Our story begins recently after the ending of Combat Evolved, as you can see by the smoldering remains of Halo. We then find ourselves watching an elite standing before the Covenant Council. This elite was the commander of the Covenant forces that were stationed on Halo, and he is being held responsible for letting Master Chief blow it up. I may not have mentioned this in the last video, but the religious figures that the Covenant worship are the Forerunners, who built the Halo rings. They believe that activating the rings will bring them salvation. They call it the Great Journey. More on that later. The elite is then sentenced to death, but is first tortured by the brute chieftain Tartarus and then brought to the Prophets the aliens in the floating chairs from before. The prophets, truth, mercy, and regret decide to not kill this elite on the spot, but to make him the Arbiter, which entails going out on suicidal missions and doing their bidding. Essentially, their rationale is that the Arbiter will most definitely die in these missions, so they might as well put him to good use before then. Meanwhile, back on Earth's orbital defense station, Master Chief and Sergeant Johnson, who miraculously made it out of Halo before it blew up, are going to receive medals from the UNSC, along with Miranda Keys, Jacob's daughter, who received a medal in her father's place. Stylistically, the way that Master Chief and the Arbiter are simulcut together really accentuates how the events of Halo 2 affected both the UNSC and the Covenant. Makes sense, considering that by the end of this game, Master Chief has been upgraded to Deuteragonist of Halo along with the Arbiter. The ceremony is then interrupted by an attack from a small fleet of Covenant ships who are planting bombs and destroying multiple UNSC vessels. Master Chief finds one of these bombs and personally delivers it to a Covenant cruiser. He then heads to Earth with the newly promoted Sergeant Major Johnson and fights off the Covenant in New Mombasa while chasing the Prophet of Regret, who initiated the invasion in the first place. Regret then flees with keys chasing after him into slipspace. The sudden slipspace jump is the catalyst for the events of Halo 3 ODST, but we'll get there soon enough. We then shift back to the Arbiter, whose first assignment is to kill a heretic elite in a gas mine. He is sent in with another squad of Covenant forces and discovers more of the Flood. The Arbiter makes it to the heretic who claims that the Great Journey is a farce, with its evidence being none other than... Who has taught you these lies? <laughs> Oracle. Hello, I am 343 Guilty Spark. I am the monitor of Installation 04. The Arbiter then kills the Heretic Elite, and Tartarus takes Guilty Spark back to High Charity, the Covenant flagship. After Keys exit Subspace, they discover a new Halo ring. Say what? Known as Installation 5. The ring from Combat Evolved was Installation 4. Regret is attempting to activate this ring, but Master Chief chases him down and kills him. After that, Covenant ships, including High Charity, bomb the area, attempting to kill Master Chief, but he jumps into the water surrounding it and is captured by a mysterious tendril. Back on High Charity, the remaining Prophets blame Regret's death on the Elites, and replace him with the Brutes as the Prophet's protectors and high-ranking members of the Covenant. After that, the Prophets ask Guilty Spark how to activate the ring, and he says that they need the Index, which the Covenant calls the Sacred Icon. The Arbiter goes to try and acquire the Index, fighting through a fuckload of Flood, and runs into Keys and Johnson, who are also looking for it. The Arbiter and Johnson get into a fight, and Tartarus captures the humans and takes the Index for himself. He then tells the Arbiter that the Prophets order the Brutes to exterminate the Elites from the Covenant as the Brutes took their place in the Hierarchy. A bloody fate awaits you and the rest of your incompetent race. And I, Tartarus, chieftain of the brutes, will send you to it. When the prophets learn of this, that they will take your head. When they learn. <laughs> Fool. They ordered me to do it. Tartarus then throws the Arbiter down a large shaft in the middle of the library 
and he's ensnared by the same tentacles that caught Master Chief. The owner of said tentacles is the Grave Mind, the central intelligence of the Flood. You also find the Prophet of Regret, who is assimilated into the Grave Mind, and also 2401 Penitent Tangent, who is the monitor of Installation 5. 2401 and Master Chief tell the Arbiter of Halo's true purpose, which makes him question his faith, and he joins Master Chief in stopping the ring's activation. The Grave Mind then teleports both of them to different locations to find the Index. Master Chief is then sent to High Charity, literally barging in on Truth giving a speech. He then chases Truth, who has the Index, and watches as the Flood crash into High Charity using a UNSC ship. Truth then escapes in a Phantom, and Mercy is infected by the Flood. Master Chief then escapes on a Dreadnought, and leaves Cortana behind in a touching moment. Chief, when you get to Earth, good luck. After I'm through with Truth. Don't make a girl a promise, if you know you can't keep it. The Arbiter, meanwhile, was teleported close to Installation 5's control room. He, along with a bunch of elites, fight their way into the control room along with Johnson and a stolen scarab. After Johnson blows open the door to the control room, the Arbiter barges in as Tartarus forces Keys to activate the ring, since only a human can activate it. The Arbiter then kills Tartarus, and Keys takes back the Index, but then Guilty Spark drops a bombshell. What's that? A beacon. What's it doing? Communicating at superluminal speeds with the frequency Communicating of with what? The other installations. Show me. Failsafe protocol. In the event of unexpected shutdown, the entire system will move to standby status. All remaining platforms are now ready for remote activation. Remote activation? Then we cut back to the Dreadnought, where Master Chief has become even more blatant with the sequel baiting. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Then we cut a second time to a scene with Cortana in the grave mind that reminds me of the ending of The Sopranos in the worst possible way. Four questions linger on. I will ask, and you will answer. All right. Shoot. The ending in present context isn't awful because Halo 3 exists. If there was no sequel and Halo 2 bombed, I think there would have been bigger problems with this so-called ending. Halo 2 really added more depth to the Halo universe, giving us a deeper look at the Covenant and the Flood. This game doesn't really feel like a Master Chief game. The central protagonist here is the Arbiter. He gets the most development by far. The story is fine as is, it's coherent even with the broad scope. Overall, Bungie did a great job there. Another thing I like about the story is the personality of all the characters, especially Johnson. He's hilarious. The message just repeats. Regret. 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 Catchy. Any idea what it means? Dear humanity, we regret being alien bastards. We regret coming to Earth. And we most definitely regret the core just blew up our raggedy ass fleet. Hoorah! Halo 2 dials up the comedic bits here and there, and they don't really take away from the game. Going from the glum seriousness of the Arbiter missions to Johnson and Cortana cracking wise is tactical comic relief at its finest. Some of the jokes were nice pace breakers, and they don't really affect the serious tone of the other events in the game. With that, let's move on to one of my favorite aspects of Halo 2. Holy shit does this game look amazing, even compared to the anniversary version of Combat Evolved. I love this EG cutscenes and I wish they made a Halo movie out of them. This is my bar for pre-rendered CG graphics in modern games. Also since Marty O'Donnell is back in the composer's chair, the soundtrack is amazing. Also in the original soundtrack there were some songs by recording artists such as Breaking Benjamin and Incubus, but for the remastered soundtrack, their songs are replaced with new tracks by Misha Mansour. Even more so than Combat Evolved, the feeling of going through an epic space opera is tangible when listening to these tracks. My favorite has to be in part, mainly because of the context in which it's used and how imposing it is musically. Halo 2's level design is on par with Combat Evolved, mainly because I recognize a lot of the same level layouts. There are still some instances where there are some copying and pasting rooms, but a lot of the levels don't feel like as much of a grind as they did in the last game. There's no backtracking, thank god, and there's a lot more variety to these level layouts in addition to the grey hallways. As you heard previously, the voice acting is also great. Other than Miranda Keys, her delivery is kind of stiff at times, but that doesn't really take away from the whole experience. The sound design aside from that is mixed. I had to get used to the new remix sound effects for all the weapons, but it did grow on me. But if you're really attached to the iconic Warthog horn or machine gun turret fire, then you might be disappointed with the new offerings. Some of the weapons, like the SMG, sound like you're firing them underwater, and others just sound generic. Like I said, it's a mixed bag, but from that, let's discuss what people most want to hear about, the gameplay. In short, Halo 2 controls almost exactly like Halo Combat Evolved, but that doesn't mean I'm ending the review here, because there are still some new additions. 
Firstly, you can zoom in whatever you want, no matter what weapon you're holding. It's kind of like binoculars, but there are still no iron sights. The pistol's invisible scope was removed, and the assault rifle has been replaced with the way superior battle rifle as the gun you start a lot of levels with. In fact, the assault rifle isn't even in this game, but the battle rifle is way better because it's like if the pistol from combat evolved and the assault rifle were welded together. There are some new weapons added in this game. The Covenant Carbine, which is basically the Covenant version of the battle rifle. There's also the Energy Sword, which looks like a lightsaber's evil twin. The Brute Shot, which is more or less a grenade launcher and the beam rifle, which is amazing for taking out enemies from a distance when they're not taking you out from a distance. Also, when the Brutes take over for the Elites, you can find special Brute versions of the Plasma Rifle, which shoot red plasma instead of blue. A nice little thematic touch there. Vehicles make a return and are still as fun as ever. There are two new vehicles, the Covenant Scarab, which I wish you can drive but you can't, and the Spectre, which is literally a Covenant reskin of the Warthog. Another new touch is dual wielding. Any small firearm can be combined with any other small firearm for twice the bullets, plasma, or needles, or any other combination. But if you melee somebody, then you drop whatever weapon you were holding in your other hand. The Arbiter adds active camouflage, which is great if you want to get past an annoying section, but beware it's limited and goes away if you fire a weapon. For the Master Chief, the flashlight is still limited in battery, but you won't need to use it as much, so it's a moot point. The health system has been reworked, there are no health packs, and your health completely regenerates if you wait long enough. So the checkpoint bullshit of Halo 1 is gone, but the difficulty is still alive and well. Jackal snipers and their beam rivals can suck it. I really hate these enemies. They can kill you in two hits and you usually have no idea where they're coming from. The flutter are about as annoying as ever, especially when they learn how to fucking drive, which is nonsense. Brutes can take an ungodly amount of hits and start charging at random points. I didn't feel as frustrated with Halo 2 as I did with Halo 1, but there were definitely some frustrating parts where the game sometimes just forgets to give you checkpoints and mission break. I thought they figured this out by Halo 1, I don't understand. God help you if you try this game on legendary difficulty. Before going into multiplayer, I also want to talk about the skull system. Skulls are essentially gameplay modifiers that can give you things like infinite ammo or larger explosions. Skulls were in combat evolved as well, and I feel like they add some nice replayability to Halo games. Skulls can also make the game even harder for you masochists out there by making you have to restart the entire level if you die. Good luck with that. The multiplayer is more or less the same as Combat Evolved, but Halo 2's multiplayer is way more popular with the Xbox Live community. I'm sure the online multiplayer was revolutionary on its own, but now it's expected from a AAA shooter. I still think Halo 2's game modes hold up, Team Slayer and Capture the Flag are very fun, and you could even have multiple people on the same Xbox in one lobby. Regardless, multiplayer still isn't my thing, I enjoy these games for the story. Overall, Halo 2 passes the age test, especially with the Anniversary Edition. The remastered graphics and music are excellent, the gameplay has been expanded upon in new and fun ways, and the multiplayer is fun if you're into that sort of thing. Halo 2 truly feels like it builds upon the foundation of the Halo Combat Evolved set, and I would much rather play Halo 2 than Halo 1 any day of the week. Before I go, I do have one question. Would you be interested in me reviewing Halo Wars as well? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you want to see more reviews, and Halo 3 is up next, the finale of the original Bungie Trilogy. See you then.